Hi friends. Hi River Church. Glad you're with us. Happy Easter. We're, we're, we're glad you're here. We're about to get started. The band's warming up in the worship space, but we just want to jump online and get this thing rolling. I wanted to tell you about a, a way to connect with us here at River Church. Normally when you come in person, we give you one of these cards. Well, this morning we, we are having a service virtually. And so same thing, we would like you to jump online at info at riverchurchrgv.com and give us any information that you would like to about yourself. And also if you have a prayer request, that would be the place where you would leave that information and the elders of the church will, will be praying for you. Yeah, maybe you're a first time guest, you've never been with us before. We'd love to get to know you at least through a through an email. So go to our website and see that. Also, we have a virtual schedule. We have all sorts of opportunities, uh, ways that you can get involved during this time of isolation. We have online Bible studies, online prayer gathering. We have devotions that we, we post online. So the virtual schedule has uh, links, uh, active links, uh, lists all the ways that you can get involved during the week. So, so go check that out. Also at the bottom of the virtual schedule, it's got information on how, uh, if you need a touch point, how you can uh, as a couple meet with Lydia and me. Uh, maybe you're a lady and you'd like to meet individually with Lydia or a guy and you want to meet with me. Go to the bottom of the virtual schedule and you'll see how you can contact us and set up an appointment with us. Well, service about to start. We're going to run in there and, and, and join the band. Glad you're here. Settle in. Uh, get rid of any distractions, and, and, and we'll get rolling here in no time. Good morning, River Church. Thank you for joining us uh, wherever you are right now. We're so happy that you've tuned in, and uh, happy Easter to you. We're excited to worship with you online, and uh, yeah, we're celebrating that Jesus is alive. He is risen, so please join us. Your voice and sing that Christ is king. 
Jesus has won, hallelujah. We overcome, oh, in Jesus, oh, in Jesus, hallelujah. Death is undone, hallelujah. Jesus has won, hallelujah. We overcome, oh, in Jesus, oh, in Jesus, hallelujah. your voice and sing that Christ is King for Jesus is alive. Let there be dancing in the darkness and let our souls break through the night. Lift your voice and sing that Christ is King for Jesus is alive. Good morning. Happy Easter. I will be reading this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early. While it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb, she saw and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went on with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. The reading of God's word, thanks be to God. Good morning and happy Easter. Today is Resurrection Sunday in the year 2020. Today is, is a new day, a day that the Lord has made just for us, and we're going to rejoice in that. On this day, around the world, several billion people celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is the most famous person to ever walk this earth. He changed history like no one else. Jesus was poor. He, he was homeless. He was a carpenter until the age of 30. He lived in relative obscurity. He would say at times, I don't even have a pillow to lay my head on. He lived a, a peasant life sort of existence. His closest friends were fishermen. I love that. If you believe today that Jesus is perhaps nothing more than a fairy tale, I mean this respectfully, but you're in the minority. Virtually all scholars agree that Jesus existed. Jesus changed history. He shaped and devastated major world religions. He changed the calendar from B.C. to A.D., the two major holidays in Western culture both revolve 
around Jesus. They honor him. He cannot be downplayed. His, he is the central figure in human history, the history of the world. In fact, I would challenge you to think of someone who has had a bigger game-changing effect on our history and our culture and our religion and our sociology. His physical body, his, his corpse, his dead body, it was never found. I suppose if it had been, to this day, we would venerate it. We would, we would have it in some shrine, but it was never found. Why? Either he rose from the grave, he defeated death, or his disciples duped everyone to this day. Christianity is a worldwide phenomenon, but it started with 11 apostles and a handful of women, the closest friends of Jesus, scared, holed up behind locked doors in a small house, thinking they were never going to amount to much. So, so much has been said about Jesus. Uh, countless books have been written about Jesus, but today we're going to hear directly from him. He told us that following him would lead to blessed eternal life. In the Gospel of Matthew, at the Sermon on the Mount, he says to a crowd, listen, you will be blessed if you follow me. You will be blessed for eternity if you follow me. So what I would like to do uh, this Easter Sunday morning is share with you five benefits of following Jesus. We live in a world where we like to do a cost-benefit analysis on just about everything. What's it going to cost me and what do I get out of it? So I don't know, maybe you think that's crass or maybe that's exactly how you would like to look at Christianity, but that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, maybe you follow Jesus, maybe you believe in Jesus because you're too afraid to not. In other words, maybe you say, you know, believing in something, even if it's a fairy tale, is, is, is better than not believing in anything. Uh, or, or maybe you, you believe in Jesus this morning, but simply out of a moral obligation. Maybe you believe in Jesus to, to, to please some other family member. It's really their faith, but you've just kind of, kind of tagged along. Uh, maybe, maybe you're just trying to, to get out of hell. What I want to uh, submit to you this morning is that there are real benefits in following Jesus. I remember uh, when I was 18 years old and I'd grown up here in the valley. I knew nothing but the valley. <clears throat> but I, I packed my 78 Camaro with a, a one really big TV that my parents had, had, had purchased for me. And that's all I had. And I headed off to college. <clears throat> I headed off to college about nine hours away. I, I arrived in Abilene, and for the first time in my life, uh, I had a spiritual crisis in a really good way. What I mean by that is I realized for the first time in my life, I don't have to follow Jesus just because my parents and my grandparents do. This faith, if it's going to be my faith, it's going to be my own. I'm going to make it personal. And so that that year, off at college, all by myself, a young 18-year-old man, I wrestled through a sort of cost-benefit analysis. What would be the benefit of me following Jesus for my lifetime? I don't have to. I'm not obligated to do so. And that was one of the richest years for me spiritually as a young man, when I began to make my faith personal and when I began to realize uh, that, that following Jesus truly does provide benefits. Jesus says, blessed are those who follow me. Jesus says, blessed are those who, who leave their own agendas, who, who claim the name of Christ as their identity, and, and, and follow his teachings, and, and follow his ways. Jesus says, you will be blessed if you do so. So I have five benefits of following Jesus. Number one, our enemies now become our friends. 
Our enemies become our friends. I don't know about you. Maybe you have lots of enemies in this world. Maybe you only have a few. We probably, uh, most of us probably have at least one or two enemies, or at least we have in the past. But I want you to understand that the Bible says that, 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 that the greatest foe, the greatest sort of enemy or <clears throat> um, unrest that we experience as humanity is, is this, this separation, uh, this, this unrest that, 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 that is between us and God. That, that because we, the human race, because we have been little rebels, we've gone our own way, we've said, I won't follow God, I'm going to do it my own way. Maybe you've heard a little three-year-old say it that way, and that's how we approach God often. I won't do it your way. I'm going to do it my way. And so we've made ourselves enemies of the living God, our Heavenly Father. But Jesus' work on the cross and his, his defeating death means that we now, once enemies of God, we are now friends. We are now in relationship. The big word is reconciled. When enemies become friends, that's reconciliation. Romans 5 said that, that, that we have been made right in God's sight by faith. Uh, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. So, so Jesus, one of the benefits of following Jesus is enemies now become friends. But, but that happens in, in, in no more uh, grand way than it does in our relationship with God. We are now at peace with God. We now have a seat at the table for eternity. He pulls the chair back and he says, sons and daughters, sit. This is your, this is your spot at the table for eternity. But not only does Jesus reconcile us to our heavenly father. In other words, not only is this reconciliation that Jesus provides, not only is it vertical, but it's also horizontal, meaning with our friends uh, everyone around us. In fact, the Bible tells us that when we become Christ followers, we become agents of peace in this world. That's you. If, you, if you're a, a Christ follower, uh, you are now responsible for seeing enemies becoming, become friends. Uh, you are an agent of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 says that. It says, Jesus has reconciled us to the Father. He reconciled us to the Father and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Are you a person of reconciliation in your day-to-day -day life? Are you always lighting fires and watching them burn relationally? To be a Christ follower means that we are about the business of reconciliation, making enemies friends. We are agents of peace. Ephesians 2 says that Christ has broken down the walls of hostility that divide us. Jesus is a peacemaker. Jesus is a reconciler. I'll tell you how I see that in my own life. I have friends who, who aren't a bit like me, but they're my friends. I, I have friends who, who, who politically aren't like me. And yet we get along and we're friends and I love them and, and they love me because I am an agent of reconciliation in their lives. They're, they're people locally and around, around the, the world who, I mean, around the, the nation, friends of mine who, who don't live the lifestyle that I, that I live. They don't hold to the, the values that I hold to. And yet they're my friends and I love them dearly because Christ has made me an agent of reconciliation in this world. Christ's followers, are you agents of reconciliation? Christ calls you to that. So, so the first benefit of following Christ is that enemies now become friends. The second benefit of following Christ is that the weak are made strong. That, that's an ethic a teaching of Jesus. And that is, that is a, as an ethic, a teaching of the church that, that the weak are made strong in Christ. So look, if you are particularly strong and proud and arrogant and aggressive, then, then Jesus may not be for you. Because Jesus said that he came uh, to make the weak, and what he means by that is those who, who admit their need, because in a sense we're all weak, Jesus said that he came to make the weak, those who admit 
there we to make them strong. You've heard this Christian teaching, this, this Jesus teaching before, I'm sure, where he says the first uh, will one day be last. Those who have always demanded to be first in line, one day they will be ushered to the back. And, 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 and the last, those who've always been kicked, kicked around and those who've always been picked upon and those who've always been taken advantage of, the last will one day be first. That is a Christian ethic. That is a teaching of Jesus. Women were esteemed in Jesus' community. We, we, we saw that in, the re, in, our, in our scripture reading this morning. The, the first, in, in the Gospel of John, the first person uh, to lay eyes on Jesus after he came out of the tomb was, was Mary, was a, was, a, was a lady. Ladies were esteemed in Jesus' community in a day when they were largely brutalized culturally. They were taken advantage of. They were mistreated. They were downplayed. In that culture, in that day, what was... What was extremely unique about Jesus' community is that women, they were esteemed. They led. They had a, a seat at the table. Jesus is, is, is about, his, his teaching, his ethic, he is about the undoing of injustice. Jesus' teachings are about the righting of wrongs. Look, if, if you know a Christian who is harsh and proud and takes advantage of the weak. I want to say that I'm sorry. I want to admit that in some ways we as Christians have, have sullied the name of Jesus because we have, we have come across as harsh and proud and arrogant and judgmental and at times we've even taken advantage of the weak so i if that's what you know of christianity then i want to say i'm sorry but that is not that is not the story of jesus jesus is about the righting of wrongs jesus is about about undoing the injustice look if if uh if, if you if you are like in, really invested in social justice then then the story of jesus the gospel that should be very attractive to you because that is the Jesus of the Bible. Years ago, when I, I lived in Albuquerque, Lydia and I, my wife and I, we were part of, 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 a, of a big church in Albuquerque, and, and we would take the, uh, the whole youth group on a, on a mission trip, and, and there was this one little girl. Uh, she was little, but she was in high school, and her name was Nikki, and, and she suffered from spina bifida, and, and she was confined to a wheelchair, and, and she'd not gone on any of these previous mission trips and choir trips because we would go on a big bus and, and, and just her needs and her inability to, 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 to get in and out of the bus had in the past always prohibited her from going. Well, I talked with her parents. We came up with a plan. We talked to some of the high school boys, asked them if they were in, and they said, yes, we would love for Nikki to go. We'd love for her to go on this mission trip. And so what we would do several times a day on this, on this uh, mission trip, on and off the bus, they would, the boys would take turns and, and they would put little Nikki on their, on their back. You know, a 17-year-old boy would put Nikki on her back and it was a delightful, like brotherly, sisterly sort of thing. And they would take her off, off the bus and then they would unfold the wheelchair and they'd put her in the wheelchair and she was good to go. So we had to get back on. And we'd, Go through that again. And she just had the most delightful time. And I remember her parents just in tears telling me what a special, special um, example that was of how Jesus calls the weak to be made strong. Sometimes in ways that we don't even imagine. There's a third benefit of following Jesus and that is guilt and shame and regret are ended. Now, I don't know about you, but, but there are things in my life that, that I regret. The things that I've done in my past that, that I wish I could go back and undo, but I, I simply can't. The things that I, I didn't do in my past that I regret. I wish that I would have done them, but it's too late. I have regret. I, I, I have 
some shame. But the gospel story is that Jesus' work on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, his pain, the penalty for my sins so that I don't have to, means that I'm no longer uh, guilty and I no longer need to feel shame. We are left with what? A life with no regrets. Romans chapter 8 says, there is, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That means if you, it, one of the benefits, if you follow Jesus, is that, that you are no longer condemned. Jesus doesn't condemn you. God the Father doesn't condemn you. When you, when you come into the church, ni neither should we condemn you. Now, now, I understand that for some of us, um, our, our family members perhaps um, condemn us or our friends. But, but for some of us, uh, we condemn ourselves more than anyone else. Uh, for some of us, like, like I'm harder on myself than God is maybe because, because he's forgiven my sins, but I'm still wallowing in it. One of my favorite passages, it's the Apostle Paul spoke of his own regret because he had done bad things in his life too. The missionary, the Apostle Paul. And when he spoke, when he wrote to the Philippians, he said this, here's what I do with my shame and my guilt. I forget the past. I forget it. And I look forward to what lies ahead. Listen, I know some of you, you've been, you've been beaten up, kicked around. You've been told that you will never amount to much. Maybe by your parents. Maybe you feel like you're defined by what you did in high school, what you did in the past. What I want you to know, the reputation that, that you have in your hometown, wherever you went to school, that does not define you. That's not who you are. Maybe you've been incarcerated in the past. Maybe you've done things that you would never admit in church because you, you would say, they'd, they'd laugh me out of here if I told them about that. What I want you to know, that does not define you. In Christ you are a new creation. One of the benefits of following Jesus is guilt, shame, and regret. They're ended. Benefit number four. Life now has a super abundance of meaning. Listen, life can feel at times so meaningless, so futile, and sometimes, perhaps in days like this, where we're not sure what's going to happen next, life can just feel like it's, it is spun out of control. The church, for me, has always been a place where I've been able to find rest. Where I've, I've been able to find a super abundance of meaning and purpose. The disciples especially the 11 disciples who followed Jesus, the, the handful of women who were, who were his closest confidants, the disciples, they were not important people. If you go back and, 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 and read the story uh, of, of the disciples, they were fishermen. Uh, they were kind of hick. They, they, this, this is the honest truth. It comes out of the Gospels. They, they spoke with a different dialect so that they kind of sounded like country folk. They had little hope of any individual acclaim or, or significance or, or notoriety. And those were the men and women that Jesus chose to be his closest confidants and to be his followers. And, and get this, those were the men and women that Jesus, he entrusted with the building of the church, the, the, the beginning of the church. It was those simple people. In Christ, those of us who maybe don't feel very significant, in Christ... We have meaning and, and purpose and a new agenda. It's an eternal agenda. We can say, even if I don't amount to much in the next 80, 90 years, so what? I have an eternity to spend with the Lord. Again, Christianity is, is often not for the important. The important, they have their own acclaim. Um, they have their own agenda. Uh, but for the rest of humanity... Those of us who, who are broken, who, who walk with a bit of a limp, who, who really haven't, haven't, haven't amounted to much in this life, what we find in Christ is a superabundance of meaning, a superabundance of belonging.
I believe that is the significance of the church relationships, of the body of Christ, the community, is that we find, we find significance in relationship. Listen, this is River Church. I'm, I'm, I'm here in the, in the worship space this morning. And this church, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to say, has always been made up of really ordinary people. Just simple folk. Simple folk like me, simple folk like you, the body of Christ. And we find deep meaning and deep fulfillment in that because, again, a benefit of following Christ is a life with a superabundance of meaning. The fifth benefit that I see from, from following Jesus this morning is that death is no longer feared. Jesus has freed us from the bondage of death. Now, in this day, in this age, I know that, that, that a lot of my friends, um, myself at, at times as well, we, we're starting to fear death, worried about maybe a loved one, worried about um, illness striking really close to home. Maybe you're worried about your children. Death can, can really, really do a number on us. It can really cause us to, to fear, but, but even more sig significantly, it can, it can have, like, put us in bondage, like we're slaves to that fear. It can be crippling for some. Well, in Jesus, there is no longer a reason to fear death because, because he has freed us from that bondage. <laughs> As a friend of mine said just the other night, Jesus slapped death in the face. He, he kicked it in the head. He, to use a, a, a Genesis sort of a, a, a description, he crushed it, um, crushed its skull with his heel. He stomped on it. He did that on Easter Sunday morning when he, when he reanimate, reanimated himself. He, he stood up in the tomb. He, he beat death. And in so doing, he freed us from the bondage of of death as well. Now you might say, well, Randy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass away one day. And, and I know that. We we all will. We we all will die a physical death. But Jesus says that beyond that, there is a hope of glory. There is an eternal home. Jesus tells us that right now he is in heaven preparing for us a home for eternity. I can't even imagine begin to imagine what that might look like, but I sure do try. In 2 Corinthians chapter 15, um, we have, we have this, this saying that, that Adam, like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the, the, our, our, our forefather, uh, forefather, our parents that, that, that sinned on our behalf and, and, and messed everything up, this passage says that in Adam all died. In other words, that's all Adam and Eve ever gave us was death. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Eve. That's all we got from them was death. Physical death, spiritual death, more significantly, meaning we, we used to commune with the Heavenly Father, walk in the garden with Him, but now we're enemies. In Adam all die, this passage says, but in Christ shall all be made alive. So that, that, that enmity, that, that separation, that spiritual death, that's all we, ever, that's all we got from Adam. But, but Jesus, in Jesus, now we're reconciled. Now we are made alive again. This fifth benefit of following Jesus is death no longer has bondage over us. I remember, it was, it was about eight years ago now, almost, and, and my, my father uh, was in the final days of his cancer, Cancer was ravaging his body. He was in pain and he'd lost a lot of weight and he'd fought a good fight, but he was tired. He was kind of done. And I, what I remember in particular about my dad was that he wasn't afraid of death. I remember one evening when he looked me in the eye and he, he, he called it out by name, death. He he, he celebrated Jesus preparing for him a home in heaven. And he said, Randy, he said, I'm, I'm ready to go be with Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm kind of looking forward to that, Randy. I'm, I'm ready. Because death had no bondage over my, over my, over my daddy. 
Uh, he was not a slave to the fear of death. With, with courage, he looked death in the face and he says, you will not beat me. Jesus has for me a home for eternity in heaven. I invite you this morning to consider the benefits of following Jesus. Uh, in just a few moments later on in the service, we're going to uh, lead you through, a, through an opportunity, a prayer, an opportunity to pray simply and, 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 and tell Jesus you want to follow him. You want to be a Christ follower. In closing, Romans chapter 10 says this, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Just a few minutes later in the service, we're going to invite you to do that, to call on the name of the Lord, that you, that you too might be saved. I invite you, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus.
I would like to lead you um, in, in a prayer now. Um, maybe right where you're, you are, in your living room or where, wherever you are, maybe you would say today, you know, I want, I want, I want some of that. Uh, the gospel story, the story of Jesus, that sounds so awesome. I want that in my life. If you would say, I, I want to follow Jesus, then you can just pray right now in, in the quietness of your own heart, in the quietness of your own room, and just say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I, I want to follow your teachings. I want to live an example of your life. Just tell Jesus that. It, say, say, Jesus, I trust in your work on the cross for the forgiveness of my sin. Just, just tell him that. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. I, I trust in you. I want to follow you. Just tell him that today, and he will save you. You'll be a child of the living God. As you pray that silently, let me pray for you out loud. God, I pray for, for my dear friends, uh, some people I don't even know, um, watching this today. I pray that you would just overwhelm them with your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace and they would know that that they are uh, secure and they're safe in your arms today we thank you that you are you're in control and when everything else maybe seems out of control you are in control god we give you we give you the praise and the glory and we thank you for what jesus did on the cross we pray this in christ's name amen amen listen if you uh if you've not uh, gotten connected to River Church in any way, but you would like to, go online, riverchurchrgv.com, and, and send us an email. We'd love to get in contact with you, send you some materials. Uh, when all this uh, is over and we can get back to our lives, come visit us at, uh, at River Church on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, for our, our friends out there, uh, the regular attenders at River Church. We love you. We miss you. Uh, invite you to... Uh, to, to go online, everybody, go online and look at our virtual calendar. We have uh, prayer gatherings online. We have Bible studies online. Uh, we have devotions online. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have an offering every day. So if you would just go to the virtual calendar and look at that, and, and we can participate in community even when we're in isolation. Also, for our, our friends, uh, regular attenders at River Church, I invite you now to, 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 to choose the service. So we go online and, and give. Um, online. Uh, if, if this ministry is going to continue and we're going to continue to pay the bills and pay the rent and, and support our missionaries globally and pay our staff and do what we, what we do, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require that you to continue to give. And, and now, now giving is online. You can also mail a check to our PO box. That, that information is on our website as well. Love you guys. Uh, glad you joined us. Uh, happy Easter. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Easter's from the Garzas. We love you. We miss you. I miss you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Hello, River Church. We have a message for you. Happy Easter from the Inolosas. Happy Easter from the Marshalls. Oh, Jonathan, say Happy Easter like we practiced. Come on, come on. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, River Church. Happy Easter, River fam. Easter, Easter everyone, everybody. from Ali, <laughs> Molly, Judah. Happy, Happy Easter, River Church. Happy, Happy Easter, River, River Church. Church. From the heart of Wyoming to all our hearts back in Texas. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Just wanted to say Happy Easter to everyone. Blessings and love you all. Hey everybody, hi River Church. Happy uh, Easter from the Caulfield family. You're supposed to say Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter! Easter. Happy Easter. 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 <laughs> all right, Great. good. Like happy Easter River Church family. I sure miss serving y'all coffee. Yes, this hairstylist also needs a haircut just like you all. Hi, Happy Easter. This is Maggie, your greeter from River Church, wishing you and yours a blessed day. We'll be seeing each other very soon. Pray and have faith. Hi, this is Keith and Gracie. Have a happy Easter. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy, happy Easter. Easter, River Church.
Happy Easter, River Church. Happy Easter. Happy Easter! Boom chakalaka! <laughs>